we will begin the ninth lecture on the book of Ecclesiastes. Today's message is from Ecclesiastes chapter 8. The title of, chap of the chapter is Discernment. First, Wisdom Changes a Person, verse 1. Second, Obey the King's Commands, verses 2 to 4. Third, Obey the Commands at a Proper Time, verses 5 and 6. Fourth, Man's Ignorance and Incompetence, verses 7 and 8. Fifth, the wicked seem to prosper, but they do not live long. Verses 9 to 13. Sixth, the righteous and the wicked of the world live in vanity, but those who have joy are blessed. Verses 14 and 15. Seventh, man cannot understand the works of God. Verses 6 to 7. First, wisdom changes a person. Verse 1. Verse 1. Let us read. Who is like the wise, and who knows the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom makes his face shine, and the hardness of his face is changed. The verse reads, Who is like the wise? And who knows the interpretation of a thing? Here, wisdom is the truth that is realized through the experiences of faith. The wise person is someone who protects his faith. When someone protects their faith, God gives them spiritual wisdom. God gave Daniel wisdom when he passed the test of eating vegetables. When believers keep their faith and apply their faith, God gives them wisdom. Although he was in a difficult situation, Daniel did not become corrupt faith. When Daniel did this, God gave him wisdom. Daniel gained wisdom that was ten times that of the wisdom of the magicians in Babylon. Daniel chapter 1 verse 20 says, And in every matter of wisdom and understanding, about which the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters that were it all that were in all his kingdom. Because Daniel showed and protected his faith, God gave him ten times the understanding and wisdom. This wisdom is truth that is found through the experiences of faith. The person with this kind of wisdom prepares for the future. Daniel chapter 12 verse 10 says, Many shall purify themselves and make themselves white and be refined, but the wicked shall act wickedly. And none shall, but those who are wise shall understand. The verse says that those who are wise shall understand. A believer's understanding that comes through protecting his faith is truth and wisdom. When we believers pass a test, God gives us this wisdom. Matthew chapter 24 verse 45 says, Who then is the faithful and wise servant 
whom his master has set over his household to give them their food at the proper time. The verse says, The Faithful and Wise Servant During the end of days, only the faithful and wise person prepares for the Lord's second coming. Matthew chapter 25 verse 1 That is why verse 1 asks, Who is like the wise? It says, Who knows the interpretation of a thing? This is the fundamentals. This person is someone who correctly knows the truth and correctly understands. This person understands spiritual things and the things that come after death. The person who does not know the interpretation of a thing does not understand spiritual things. They live for physical things and for the things of this world. However, the one with wisdom knows the interpretation of things. The verse says, A man's wisdom makes his face shine. It says wisdom makes his face shine. The hardness of his face is changed. When we believers in Jesus, when we believe in Jesus and obey the word, we will have a faith that experiences things. And we change. When a person believes in Jesus, he quits drinking. When a person believes in Jesus, he quits smoking. When a person believes in Jesus, he quits gambling. We quit everything that is bad in this world. The dirty things of the heart start to disappear. Looking at his face, we can see his heart. Because his heart has seen heaven, his face changes. Exodus chapter 34 verse 29 says, When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand as he came down from the mountain, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Moses prayed and descended from the mountain, his face shined. It, sh it shined with the light of God. Because Moses was near to God, he came to become like God. Matthew chapter 17 verse 1, 2 Corinthians. The truth that comes from understanding changes us. When we, we take on the form of Jesus Christ, we become a new creation. When we believe in Jesus and are changed, we live life as a new person. We become the wise person. Second, keep the king's commands. Verses 2 to 4. Verse 2. I say, keep the king's command because of God's oath to him. The verse says, I say, keep the king's command because of God's oath to him. Here, the king refers to God. Our God is the king of the universe. We are only blessed when we obey his commands. Also, 
We need to keep the commands of the kings of the world is proper. God's commands come first. He is the one who raised the kings of this world. Romans chapter 13 verse 1 says, Let every person be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. God has appointed the authorities. Therefore, we must be subject to the authorities that God has appointed. The Bible says that we must be subject even to the wicked king. This means that although our superiors may be fussy, we must serve them well. As the Bible says, we must serve those above us. Why must we do this? The answer is, God has appointed them. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 18 says, Servants with all respect, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the unjust. We must not only obey the good masters, but we must also obey those who are unjust. God puts unjust masters above us because we need those people. Obeying their words is obeying God. It is obeying Jesus Christ, the King of Kings. Doing good to our parents is doing good to God. Also, we bring God joy when we serve pastors of the church. Being faithful to the nation means being faithful to God. However, it must be made clear that we must do all these things in the Lord. We must obey for the glory of God. Colossians chapter 3 Verse 22 says, Bonds, Obeying those who are your earthly masters, not by way of eye service as people pleasers, but, but with the sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. The verse commands the servants to obey not by way of eye service. Servants must obey their masters with a heart that fears God. From whom does this Bible verse come? It is God's words. Therefore, obeying the Bible is obeying the words of God, the King of Kings. Ephesians Chapter 6 verse 5 says, Bond servants, obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling, with a sincere heart, as you would Christ, not by the way of eye service, as people pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Serve our superiors. Therefore, we must serve our masters well. Do we only obey when our masters are kind? No. Even if our masters are unjust, we must obey them. We obey them because God commanded us to obey them. 
verse 3. Be not hasty to go from his presence. Do not take your stand in an evil cause, for he does whatever he pleases. The verse says, Be not hasty to go from his presence. In God's presence, we must not turn our backs to him. It means we should not show him our backs. In the past, anyone who showed their back to the king would be killed. The commands of the kings of the past were considered to be heaven's commands. Anyone who went against the king's orders would die. Without the order of the king, no one could turn their back to the king. Therefore, we too must not show our backs. Here it also says, Do not take your stand in an evil cause. God is all-knowing and all-powerful. He knows what is in our hearts. We must not sin in the presence of such a great God. God is the all-knowing God who searches our hearts. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 10 says, I the Lord search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. God searches our hearts. He judges us according to our actions. Therefore, in the presence of the King, we must not be haste to turn our backs to Him. We must not show our backs. Additionally, we must not take a stand in an evil cause. God is watching every evil thing we do. When a person sins, God, at the right time, judges the person. We must not show God our backs, and we must not do evil deeds. Verse 4 For the word of the king is supreme, and who may say to him, What are you doing? Why is this so? It is because the words of the king have authority. When God speaks, the waves become calm. The winds become calm. God also causes the winds to blow. Everything happens with God. God's power divided the Jordan River. His power caused the Dead Sea to part. God's power raised the dead Lazarus from the dead. God's words have authority. Therefore, we must not turn our backs to Him. We must not do evil deeds. Verse 4 says, And who may say to him, What are you doing? God's power has no bounds. He can do anything and everything. He can do all things because he is the Almighty God. For this reason, we are blessed when we obey 
his commands. The one who obeys the king's commands is blessed. When Peter trusted in the words and threw his net in the sea, God blessed with a boatful of fish. Peter caught 153 big fish when he trusted in the words and threw the net to his right side. I hope you all obey God's commands and receive blessings. Third, obey the commands at the proper time. Verses 5 and 6. Verse 5. Whoever keeps a command will know no evil thing, and the wise heart will know the proper time and the just way. We must know the proper time when we keep a command. If we go when God tells us to go, we will be blessed. We must know the proper time to keep God's command. The verse says, Whoever keeps a command will know no evil. When we obey God's commands, He gives us grace. Those who meditate on His word day and night will know no evil thing. That is why the verse says, Whoever keeps a command will know no evil thing. Revelation chapter 1 verse 3 says that the one who reads the words, hears, and keeps the words is blessed. Blessed are those who's, who hear God's words and keep them. Psalm chapter Psalm 1 verse 1 says Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners nor sits in the seat of scoffers but his delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law he meditates day and night Blessed is the one who meditates on the Lord's law day and night. Sin will know an evil thing. This is because God is truthful and He guides us to green pastures and still waters. God guides us to still waters where we can rest. His word is a lamp unto our feet. His word guides us to where we need to go. Psalm 119 verse 11 says, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. We must store God's words in our heart so that we will not sin. That is why David kept God's word in his heart at all times. It is the proper way to live. Psalm 119 verse 147 says, I rise before dawn and cry for help. I hope in your words, my eyes are awake the what that I may meditate on your promise. Why does he seek the, the word of God early in the morning? He does this because he does not want to know evil. 
believers, I hope you obey the words of the Bible and are not met with evil. We must be able to have good judgment and know the proper time. Verse 6 For there is a time and a way for everything, although man's trouble lies heavy on him. The verse reads, For there is a time and a way for everything, although man's trouble lies heavy on him. There is a proper time and procedure for everything. Someone who does not discern the proper time and does not do what he should do will be met with trouble. It, farmers plant seeds in the spring. They harvest in the fall. But if they plant seeds in the fall, will they be able to harvest? Proverbs chapter five, 10 verse 5 says, He who gathers in summer is a prudent son, but he who sleeps in harvest is a son who brings shame. Therefore, someone who keeps the Lord's commands will not see trouble. He knows the proper time for things. He will not see trouble, but he will see a beautiful harvest. During the end of days, we must understand the times and properly do what we must do. We must pray when it is the time to pray, and we must preach when it is time to preach. Fourth, man's ignorance and incompetence. Verses 7 and 7. For he does not know what is to be, for who can tell him how it will be? Man does not know what is to be. Who can predict the future? People do not know what will happen in the future, nor can they tell others about it. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 1 James chapter 4 verse 14 People are ignorant and finite beings. God is infinite and He is Almighty. Therefore, we must be humble before God and fear Him. Verse 8 No man has power to retain the Spirit, or power over the day of death. There is no discharge from war, nor will wickedness deliver those who are given to it. Man is ignorant and powerless, cannot control breath to extend their lifespan. People do not know the day of their death. We cannot predict war. If there is war, we cannot avoid it, nor can we stop it? Furthermore, the wicked think they can prosper in their wicked deeds, but in the end they perish. Therefore, humans are powerless. That is why we must trust in the Almighty God. Fifth, the wicked seem to prosper, but they do not live long. Verses 9 to 13. 
Verse 9. All this I observed while applying my heart to all that is done under the sun. When man had power over man to his hurt. The wicked seem to do well, but they perish eventually. All this I observed while applying my heart to all that is done under the sun. People may have power over other people. When people become rich and grow in power, they may have men working for them. Verse 10 Then I saw the wicked buried. They used to go in and out of the holy place and were praised in the city where they had done such things. This also is vanity. People may gain authority, but eventually the wicked die and are buried. When these people die, the people of the city forget about them. Therefore, everything is vanity. Those who do good are respected in life, but when they die, they too are forgotten. Thus, that is vanity. This is the story of our lives. Verse 11 Because the sentence against an evil deed is not executed speedily, the heart of the children of man is fully set to do evil. The wicked think there is no God, so they boldly commit acts of sin. However, the wicked do not live long, for they perish. Because God is just, He punishes the wicked. Verse 12 Though a sinner does evil a hundred times and prolongs his life, yet I know that it will be well with those who fear God, because they fear before Him. The sinner does evil a hundred times and prolongs his life. But ultimately, the wicked die and perish. However, those who fear God ultimately receive salvation and are blessed. Psalm 37 verses 35 and 36 Verse 3 uh, verse 13 But it will not be well with the wicked, neither will he prolong his days like a shadow, because he does not fear before God. The wicked who do evil a hundred times are like a shadow. The wicked do not fear God. Eventually, God judges the wicked who meet their downfall. Sixth, the righteous and the wicked of the world live in vanity, but those who have joy are blessed. Verses 14 and 15. Verse 14. There is a vanity that takes place on earth, and there are righteous people to whom it happens of the wicked, and there are wicked people to whom it happens according to the deeds of the righteous. 
I said that this also is vanity. Verse 15 talks about man's joy. Eating and drinking is a joyful thing. How fun is it when we eat and drink? The spiritual meaning of this is that we find pleasure in eating and drinking the Word of God. That is the greatest pleasure. I hope you eat and drink God's Word to enjoy true pleasure. Spiritual joy in God is true joy. Seventh, man cannot understand the works of God. Verses 16 and 17. Verse 16. When I applied my heart to know wisdom and to see the business that is done, how neither day nor night do one's eyes see sleep. There are things that happen in this world that our wisdom cannot understand. We can only live proper lives when God, who is the beginning of knowledge, allows us to understand. Verse 17 Then I saw all the work of God that man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun. However much man may toil in seeking, he will not find it out. Even though a wise man claims to know, he cannot find it out. Man cannot understand every work of God. People may research and study, but we cannot understand. Romans chapter 11 verse 33 says, We must fear God, protect our faith, and them the will of God. This ends the ninth lecture on the book of Ecclesiastes. Thank you.